Hey, you, it's a blind life. everyone and welcome back to the it's a blind life podcast my name is aria and i'm bell and we are two legally blind sisters who decided to make a podcast just talking about our lives as blind people we talk about what we want when we want it's a variety show there's no rhyme or reason to anything it we just, talk about what we want when we want just is what it is that's all <laughs> what you see it. is what you get like that's, that's really it or i guess what you hear is what you get regardless so today in honor of bell's finals coming up essentially she wanted us to talk about just education and you know for blind people uh, as a okay whole. let's be real on how this worked out bell went to aria and said i know we need to film but like my brain is trying to brain and my brain's not braining so like you need to figure something out so maybe we should do this because i don't think my brain's going to brain to do the thing you want it to brain that is how that conversation went and aria said okay (laughs) so here we are because of my brain so here we are so that being said Let's talk about just our education experiences first, and then we'll kind of go from there, from kind of what we've heard and all that jazz. So my education experience, when I was growing up... It's your lucky education experience. I was going to say, I didn't have very many problems. Most you. (laughs) Most all the teachers were very helpful in doing what I needed done like there was maybe one or two that made life a little difficult but like all in all all said and done through all through elementary middle and high school had really good experience education wise kind of learned what I needed to not only like general education but learning how to advocate for myself and learning like those different skills as well were also really, really big for me in that time. And so going to college, I felt, you know, prepared, at least on the disability front of if I have a problem, this is what I do. How can I fix the problem that I need to fix? And went through my first two years of college and everything was fine, was able to do everything I needed to do. The professors were super nice and accommodating and helpful. Everything was great. Then we hit my junior year of college. When I was a junior, I was, when I went to college, I was going with the intention to go forward on to vet school. That was the intention. And so, of course, because of that, I was a biology major. Now, Biology, like, I never loved it. It was more of a, I need to do this to get to what I want to do. So that's what I did. And got through the first two years okay. Going into junior year, I had to take anatomy to fit in one of my course requirements. And plus... It was going to be the most beneficial class if I was planning to go forward to vet school. That was kind of talking to my advisors, talking to the head of disabilities. I had a lot of people kind of behind me helping me to pick the classes I needed to pick to get what I wanted to get done, essentially. So had a new professor who had never taught at the school before. But everybody was kind of like, it's just anatomy, like it's going to be fine, not a problem. So go to this class and I had special equipment to help me. And in the beginning, the first thing that 
you know, we covered, we had essentially different like systems of the body and like a test on each one of those systems. And that's kind of how this class was broken down. And it was kind of like I had like five mini finals over the course of this class, essentially. And so the first one we talked about was like the skeletal system. So, of course, learning like all the bones, all of the things that exist for these. And I actually really enjoyed that because it was, you know, very tactile. Like, yes, there were things that I had to learn where things were, but like, you know, tactile, I could do this. Didn't really need super specialized equipment for it. Totally fine. So studied really hard. We all took the test. Everything was fine. We get the test back and... Essentially, there were several questions, there were at least five, that the teacher had messed up. She had the question, she said the answer was X, when looking through our notes, the answer was actually Y. And so when she was reviewing this test, we would be like, hey, like, that's wrong. Like, according to our notes, you messed up. And so she was like, for the first, you know, couple questions, she was just kind of like, oh, that's, you know, okay, yeah, you're right. I messed up. Give yourself a point for that. Like, I will fix that. And after like the third or fourth question, she was just like, I don't care. Whatever I have written down is correct. I don't care what was actually correct. What I said is correct. And never in my entire, like, educational life had a teacher ever just been like, even if it's blatantly wrong, I don't care. And so for a lot of us, that was just kind of like, okay, like, that doesn't really work out very well. So then, like, kind of going through, and as time went on, this professor kind of got worse and worse and worse. And, like, I came to find out, like, she went to, like, the head of disability to complain about me. I don't know if she complained about any of the other disabilities kids, but she complained about me. And said that I was like a horrible student and all of this stuff. And the head of disabilities and I, when we first met, we just clicked super easily, kind of knew what we needed to know, clicked. And she knew me very, very well and had never had a complaint from any professor about me. And she was just kind of like, uh, no, I don't know what's going on. But like whatever it is, it's purely you and it is not her. No, absolutely not. And as time went on, my equipment that I was using actually went down like halfway through the class. Couldn't get it to work. Didn't know what was going on. Was trying to get it fixed. It was a whole thing. And so my professor in her infinite wisdom had pretty much said, well, like, this isn't really going to work, but, you know, what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to be tested from the pictures in the book. Now, you might think, well, that sounds like it's super easy to do. You know, why didn't you just do that? And the thing is, is that when you're looking at a something like an actual creature that you're, you know, trying to find the parts of the body on. If you get lost, you can always kind of trace your way back and then kind of go back forward again to try to remember essentially where exactly you are and what you've got going on. And when you're looking at pictures, you don't have that. You only have that snapshot. So it's not like you're actually learning like what's connected where and what goes to where. It is purely... Try to remember the placement, and if you can't, tough luck. And so, of course, when you have disabilities for anyone who doesn't know, a lot of times an accommodation you can have is you can have testing in kind of a separate area away from everybody else. And I had that accommodation. I would do all of my testing in the disability office. 
because they had like a little testing zone that you could, you know, do all your testing. And they essentially had, there were big windows so they could watch through and make sure like no one was cheating or anything, but they had you like empty your pockets and stuff. So it wasn't like you could cheat. And so I was taking this test that was, you know, purely based off pictures. And I was getting very, very frustrated because I didn't know where I was. Like, I didn't know what was going on. I was just very frustrated. And I felt like I was hiding that very well. But apparently I wasn't because the head of disabilities happened to come in and they kind of pulled me out from taking the test. And they were just like, hey, what, like, what's going on? This isn't like you. What's going on? And I explained the situation. And the head of disabilities is like, oh, hon, I'm going to try to make this easier. Let's see what we can do. And so she took me into her office. And she kind of tried to explain what the picture showed. And, like, she, it's not like she... Because she didn't know the material, obviously. But, like... She was just trying to be like, okay, you said this is this. The next thing is pointing to the thing below that. What is that? And she was just trying to kind of articulate, you know, these things. And so I finished the test with her. I don't want to say help because that's not the right word, but assistance, guidance, however you want to say it. And after that test, she was like, what's going on? And so I told her and she was just kind of like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with an idea to get you through this last test that you have to take. Like, we're going to get you through the semester. It's going to be okay. And I was like, I felt really much better about that because as much as I'm a person that I try to solve the problem on my own, Sometimes you can't and sometimes you need that outside help. And so pretty much we came up with a plan for the last test. The last test was the nervous system. You had to find the nerves in the body and do all these things. And again, I was learning from pictures. So what we did was we took the pictures and the disability head and her secretary, they used glitter puff paint to paint over the nerves. And then one day the head of disability sat down with me and she's like, okay, this is this, this goes from like, this is what branches off from here. And like, she kind of taught me what these pictures showed. So then I could study that. And honestly, that made life so much easier than anything I had done up until that point. And the last test was probably my best test out of it all because it was just, I was able to get the help that I need to do what I needed to do. But after that class, I kind of decided that vet school was not going to work out like I there was so much frustration and headaches and anger and f everything over just trying to learn the body system of one type of animal how was that going to be for trying to learn many many more and so it was then that I decided not to go to vet school and I finished out my degree tried to figure out where I'm going. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. But that was kind of the bulk of my education experience. And everything after that anatomy class went back to quote unquote like normal. It was just that one class that just kind of blew everything apart. And so, yeah, that's pretty much my education experience. I know most of it's boring, but you know, that is what it is. Now, would you like to explain yours, Belle? My experience sucked <laughs> from day one in this world. <laughs> problems were to be had. <laughs> Let's see. Where do I even start? A little bit at the beginning. I don't even know where it started. 
elementary school sucked. There were issues with principal wouldn't allow my mother to come talk to my teachers. That's why I had undiagnosed dyslexia for most of my life. <laughs> Not most of my life. My early life. Eventually, I switched schools and I had a principal and my teachers who worked closely with my parents and they were like, she knows this stuff. Her answers are just wrong on the test. So I got tested, had dyslexia. So from fourth and fifth grade, my per- my teachers worked really well with my family and I. Middle, Middle school. school. Sixth grade was fine. I had some good teachers. Seventh grade, I had a reading teacher. I wasn't put in honors English. And then my dad came in and he's like, why is she not in honors English? And my sixth grade teacher was just like, I completely forgot to recommend her for honors English. So I got put in honors English. Had a hundred in the class, but my teacher complained about me. Huh. Because I'd have a headache and I'd sit there and read. She's like, I don't understand, blah, blah, blah. Had a hundred in the class. Didn't matter. Uh, and so I was taken out of that and put back into regular English with Aria's old Spanish teacher. I know. Weird, right? <laughs> yeah, very weird. Lovely lady. She gave me different things than the other people in the class because she knew I understood things. Really helped me that year. She even was very accommodating. We lost our grandmother that year, so it was a very hard year, uh, especially for me. Gosh, that was seventh grade. And one of the readings that we did was a book called Missing May. And it was about a girl who lived with her aunt and her uncle and her aunt died. Mm. And our mom talked to the teacher and was like, look, she's struggling enough already. It was a short book. So we were reading it together in class. And so my mom was like, can she please just read this at home with me? Like, I don't know what this is going to do to her. And she was very accommodating with that. No issues there. Had a wonderful history teacher that year with his, and his wife was my science teacher. Wonderful human beings. He will forever be one of my favorite teachers of all time. He really helped me. He saw that I was completely segregated from my classmates. So he made me do a lesson on my vision for my entire year. That was interesting to do. And then I'm trying to think of eighth grade. I had more of Aria's old teachers. <laughs> it went fine. There was issues with one of my accommodations, but we worked it out. It was fine. It sucked at the time, but it made me a better writer, so it worked. High school. Oh my gosh, what happened in high school? What didn't happen in high school? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> a lot of my teachers had Aria in high school. A lot of them had Aria, had Aria. So a lot of them were just like, this is fine. <laughs> we'll work it out. This is fine. Whatever. This is fine. I had some issues with like the biology professor or biology teacher because I was in honors biology and he was just thinking I was as smart in science as Aria. I am not. <laughs> I'm so lucky to pass the, to, to be able to graduate in our home state, you had to pass a series of tests and you had to pass a reading math and a science the only reason i passed science was because my entire test i happened to get really lucky and i got a test all based on cell structure and genealogy and i had to give two reports in that class one of my reports was on the father of genetics and my other one was on cells. <laughs> you got so lucky. I got so lucky, especially considering Aria helped me with those reports. <laughs> I got so, so lucky. lucky. That is the only reason I passed that test. Because I would have not passed otherwise. Like, I passed and I got, like, a really high grade on that. And I was just like, if I didn't, I was done. I would have had taken that so many <laughs> times. Other than that, that was freshman year. I had a really nice history teacher. He didn't have Aria, but he made us handwrite vocab. And we got it to where I we explained it like it's hard for me to 
handwrite that type of thing. And so he let me type it. It was great. He even gave me a brownie at the end of the year if I gave him a flash drive <laughs> with all of the stuff. So he had a copy electronically of all the definitions <laughs> of key terms. And I was just like, I will do that. So I turned those into him and I got a brownie. It was great. Sophomore year. What did I have sophomore year? I don't remember. I don't remember. Obviously, it Obviously, was fine. Obviously, it was fine and nothing important. Oh, geometry. Geometry sucked. I hated it. It was so difficult. Never want to do that again. I love math. I hate geometry. It sucks. It's dumb. No. <laughs> uh, never again. Mm, Ever. Never. No. If I have children and they take geometry, I'm going to be like, you got to figure it out yourself because I will not sit there and figure it out with you. I refuse. Talk to your per teacher or whoever. I'm not doing it. That was difficult. But like all in all, I had, again, I think I had a lot of the same teachers you had i think you did no just, i didn't that was the year i didn't oh. uh, i didn't have one per teacher who had you shocking i know right but yeah it worked out fine I, I passed obviously and then junior year oh goodness what happened junior year i had i had p teachers aria had again and i had a really awesome math teacher he was great. I loved him. I took him again senior year. I literally took an easier math class just to have him senior year. <laughs> I should have been in calculus, and I said, I will gladly take statistics. Thank goodness I took statistics, because I had to take it my freshman year of college. Thank God I did that, because I understood pretty much all of what we were doing, and I was like, thank goodness, <laughs> or else I would have been up a creek without a paddle. So then, <laughs> after that, I had no real problems that year. That was the year I took my SAT and ACT, though, right? Yes. Yeah, it would have been. That was that year. That was different because what ended up having to happen was I ended up taking it by my guidance counselor as my proctor. He got it cleared by the state. Like, he got it cleared because my accommodations, it wasn't really possible for me to take it, like, with everybody else. So he'd, like, pull in a desk from like a random he'd like go to the classroom next door and he's like i'm stealing a desk and the teacher was like okay and he just pull a desk and set it in his room and he's like yeah i'm gonna come and go but just stay here and do it but i wasn't the worst like it, it was fine senior year i took a really easy senior year i had a really bad english teacher though i took ap lit really bad english teacher she should not have been teaching english She's no longer teaching English, thank goodness. Yeah, she should not have been teaching English. She focused on the wrong things that we needed. There's a reason I didn't pass my AP test. It's fine. I'm not salty about it. I didn't take it for the AP credit anyway. I literally just took it because that was my I thing. liked literature. Yeah, that was my thing. I never took any AP class because yeah, we, I wanted the credit. Yeah, we never took a single AP class because we wanted the credit. And our parents were always just like, take the AP class if you want to take the AP class. But like, it doesn't matter if you get the credit or not. Because like, I know I was really terrified of not getting the credit because of this teacher. And our parents were like, it does not matter to us. You took the class because you wanted to take it. And like, the and thing, it was a challenge for you. My thing was, is that like AP classes <coughs> up into that point were like the only thing that truly like challenged my brain. Yeah, th that was the only thing that challenged us. The only difference was I was in regular physics, regular sciences, but everything else I was advanced in. I was in honors history or honors government. I didn't take AP history because I valued my oh, life and soul. Yeah, yeah. I never took AP history. Yeah, I had friends who took it. <laughs> Senior year, oh my gosh, I made the smartest decisions ever in my life of taking easier stuff and like moving my schedule around to best, like give me an easy year. Like I took statistics. It benefited me in the long run, but like at the same time, <laughs> it was an easy course because of the teacher, but I loved him. So I was like, I'm doing it. I should have been in calc, but I refused calc. And then I should have taken an honor something, something, but I didn't like the teacher. Like I never had her, but like I, I wasn't a fan of her mm -hmm. from like the interaction I have had with her. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't a fan. And my 
old math teacher that I had freshman year, her son also taught at the school. That math teacher also had Aria. So, you know, she knew us and everything. So I ha- I ended up taking her son for modern history. So we covered everything from like World War II to present day. I had him for modern history. It was lovely because I got to go to that class after lunch with like 10 other people and all my friends went to AP history in tears <laughs> and I was just like it sucks to be you <laughs> I don't feel bad I my fr- don't feel my bad. friends hated my guts that year <laughs> just because of that class and I'm like you did this I told you literally my best friend I legit told him don't take that class he didn't listen and took that class he deserved it I helped him study. I was a nice human. But I had two study halls that year, and I took online college courses. It was fine. I somehow passed this online sociology course. I hate sociology. It's dumb. Oh, it's fun. I hate it. You liked it you liked it because you helped me with some of my stuff because I didn't know what I was doing because no one prepares you for that. And then I took an algebra And I passed with flying colors. I loved that. That was so fun. So I had two study halls. I had my morning nap period on second period. And then (laughs) and then I had my afternoon nap period for seven and eighth period. (laughs) I had a really easy year. I had my morning nap, my afternoon nap. (laughs) And then I came home and took another nap. No. From the afternoon, I mainly hung out with my visions teacher or I went and I did work in the choir room because I was a big person who worked with a lot of that stuff. So yeah, that's kind of what that was. I passed very high in my class. I was what, 23? I don't remember. I was high up in my class. Not as high as Aria, but Aria cheated. I did not <laughs> she cheat. Didn't cheat. She had easy teach. She had easier teachers than what I had. I had horrible. I had issues from day one. Uh-huh. So then college came i didn't know what i was doing took a uh, psychology class i can't share all of what happened with that professor let's just say it was a (laughs) situation it was a situation and we didn't know it was a situation until until it was much too late yeah to uh be not in that class anymore it was like my third week of school that i found out about it and i was just like "Uh uh-huh and then it was, what, like a week or two later? Yeah, that I got my first test back and I got a D and I said to my parents, can I drop out of this class? And they said no. And then we had the next lesson and I called my dad and I was like, yo, this just happened. Please let me drop this class. And he said, yes, you can drop the class. So I dropped the class and then I became a finance major. <laughs> I became a finance major. Let me preface also, I am in law school completely by accident. <laughs> completely so by accident. So you keep saying. No, I, I'll get to that. Anyway, I was undecided and then I was business undecided. And then COVID hit. I loved what COVID did for college for me. I loved online. I excelled. I had great professors at that point in time. I had a wonderful teacher. We did spreadsheets and stuff. He wrote his own book for the class. And his book is used like around the world for programming and coding and courses with computers. His book's are renowned and his books have own assignments that were our homework that we had to do however his assignments were (laughs) color-coded that wasn't gonna go well (laughs) that wasn't gonna happen so we talked about it and he was really sweet about it he then said because they were going to like have to redo the book within like the next year or two at whenever i had him and he was like i'm going to completely redo this so there's no color coding Oh, that was nice of him. Um, So he completely redid the book, supposedly because of me. I don't know. But he was really sweet about it. He was great. I had no problems with my tests. Most of my professors were very nice. It was also business. So like, you know, a lot of my grades were for presentations and such. Sophomore year. I was going to say school-wise for college college, for you. I was pretty easy. I had some really good professors Really funny like, ones. All the problems that you had, like in your early school, had 
I feel like leveled out. Yeah, they really did. Whereas Arya had an easy time going through grade school and hit her problems in college. It was the complete opposite for me. I had every problem under the sun in grade school. And then once I hit college, it was like pretty smooth sailing. Like at that point, I was like, I don't know what else you can throw at me (laughs) because I have honestly been through it all so like try me at this point because like i i don't know what more you can do to me i had my business law class and i excelled in it i loved it i excelled in it and then around that time i graduated early i completed my degree early Actually, I was probably, by the time I was in business law, I was completing the last major courses to be required for me to graduate around that time that, like, counted towards my specific degree of finance. Like, I pretty much had all of the actual finance classes themselves done, except for one, but, like, it honestly didn't matter at that point in time. So, like, I knew that I wasn't challenged with finance anymore because once I knew the equations, I'm like, this is easy. This is dumb. Why am I doing this? At that point, it was too late. At also that point, I decided I'm going to get a certificate because I only have to take, like, two extra classes. So why not get a certificate? So I did that, and that's how I ended up with a certificate in organizational leadership. That is another story that got me mad. So, again... For my senior year, I tried to make it easy for myself. I had one semester left. And so I'm just like, I'm going to do this as easy as possible. So I think I took, I had to take my one leftover finance class, which is, was like pretty much like stock portfolio, which meant once a week. And we literally just sat there and with, I sat there with a bunch of guys and we talked about like stock that the school should buy and stuff like that. Very easy stuff. Especially since I already completed everything else. The issue came when I had to argue with them over a PowerPoint. Because (laughs) um, learned men don't understand the concept of PowerPoint and presentation. Men are... Oh my gosh. Nothing against any male listening to this. But like, if you try... To be like, oh, our school color is blue. The background of the PowerPoint should be blue. Then the text should not be black. True. Come on, common sense. And so then finally I was the one who spoke up who was just like, you know our colors are blue and right, r- white, right? Like you should change the text to white because like that black and the blue, is it, it hurts. So like change it. And then we argued about font. And it, was, it was a mess. That class was mainly me arguing with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also had an accounting course that I had to take because I needed another elective for my finance degree. But... They weren't offering any. And the elective that I was going to take, they said, no, we're changing the actuary program, so we won't have that. Okay, what am I to do? So what do you want me to do So what do you want me to do? So they had talked to the dean of the business school. He's like, okay, just um, find your something that kind of is close to it. We'll, We'll figure out something. So they stuck me in advanced accounting (laughs) oh my gosh i should not have been stuck in advanced accounting i hate it was taxes it was entirely tax management i had to learn w-2s i had to learn all that and i'm just like i hate all of this thank goodness our father is a cpa it helped me through it because it was horrible (laughs) i hated every minute of my life (laughs) and then The other cherry on top of the cake. To get my certificate, I needed a class. I had class with the head of that degree department. And I talked to her and I was like, yo, I need this one class to graduate with this certificate. I will not stay another semester for you to offer this. Can you do an independent study with me? Because she was doing independent studies with other people. So I was just like, can you do an independent study with me for this course? She's like, oh, yeah, sure. No problem and everything else. I email her about it, and she talks to me and everything. I get an email on my birthday, before my scene, like my last semester, on my birthday, I get an email from her that says, I talked to the dean, we looked at your record, and we believe you are too smart for this course. (laughs) So, we need to find something more difficult for you to take. I am not joking on this email. It is one of those like so mad. 
why? Because it was like a level 100 course. I'm like, oh, this will be easy, right? Bird course. <laughs> Bird course. Nothing. Like, level 100. Easy nonsense. I can do that. And then they were like, psych, no, you are not allowed to do that. And I was like, what? Excuse me. I literally had to have four other people read that email. I'm like, please tell me you are all reading this correctly. And they're like, yeah, apparently you're too smart for that course. You're so, too smart. So she put me in this complete, for senior graduating in that degree with an organizational management degree, you had to do in independent study on something else like it, it was like this overall like gigantic project thing that you had to do really weird really really weird i don't even remember like what all it was but like you had to pick something and like do this entire big project on it okay fine and she's like I'll tailor it to you to make it help you. Well, I was doing, like, applying to law school and stuff. And, like, I have been the first one to apply to law school in our family in a long time. So, like, the process was completely different. So, I, like, made an entire presentation on, like, the law school process and how it could be made more efficient and everything else. It was a big thing. And then that got published to the school. <laughs> Sorry to anybody who got that email with that. You probably don't even listen to this podcast so it doesn't matter anyway <laughs> it, so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so anyway i had to do that i was so mad that was like the one time I, was, I, I had never been more mad when they told me that and then i was also that was published and then i was also published for uh twice more in college for projects i worked on which me and my group won so like our plans and results were published by our professors so yeah, in that time, I decided, whenever I decided finance was too easy, and I excelled in my law class, everybody was like, yeah, law. And I said, you know what? Sure. <laughs> sure. Completely by accident. So like, I had to take the LSAT and everything. It was a, that was a mess in itself. LSAT and accommodations was difficult. I never want to do that again. So glad I don't have to. And then I got into law school and now I'm in law school and I am completely here by accident. I don't know how I'm still here. <laughs> we had, I, and the reason I say I'm completely here by accident, for my one of my scholarships, a judge came in and talked to us and she said, I am here completely by accident. <laughs> and she said on how she... <laughs> completely by accident she made it into law school was a complete average student through law school which i feel that and then it just kind of continued for her she was an attorney she was a very good attorney with her clients and everything and then she got a call from one of the judges and said yo this judge is retiring you should apply she was like no i i don't think so i think i'm okay hung up the phone Five minutes later, gets a call from another judge saying the exact same thing. By, like, the time, like, it's five days in and all the judges have called her, like, 20 times, she's like, okay, I give up, fine. You all win, I'll apply. Applies, and somehow she gets in. <laughs> she's like, I am here by accident. <laughs> like, I shouldn't be here. It is a complete accidental thing that I'm here. She's a great judge. But, like... She's like, I am completely here by accident. There is there is no ands, ifs, or buts. So, like, I feel that and I resonate with that. Hence why I am here by accident. <laughs> and let me tell you, it just keeps getting more and more by accident as I go. Like, uh, I'm going to get more involved. I'm going to, uh, this next coming year, I have finals. At the time of recording, I have a final in two days. <laughs> Mm -hmm. i have my first final in two days so next year and over the summer i'm going to work to get more involved in everything and holy crap it's gonna be a lot it's gonna be a lot and it's all gonna be on accident like if i get into some of the stuff i'm trying out for all on accident <laughs> <laughs> like there's no hope like literally i'm going to try to become a tutor for my for my writing professor and literally the first thing I'm going to say to everybody, I'm here by accident. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs> I am honestly here by accident. 
I don't know what I'm doing, but I am here. And I have wonderful professors, completely by accident, that I'm also at this school. Like, it was like a stroke of luck. I got into here in another school, but I refused to go to the other school. A very prestigious school. I, yeah, I... Can I say? Let's not. Okay. Anyway, I got into a prestige, like one, one of the top schools for law, like technically top schools for law. And I said no, because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I, I applied there on a whim. Like I, I didn't want to go there when I applied. I just did it because I was like, I just want to see what will happen. And you saw. And I saw. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, thank you. Never mind. Take it back. <laughs> Give it to someone else. And the only other law school I heard from was my school. And we have some of the best faculty in the country. My property professor is only one of 50 law school professors in the United States who can teach rule against perpetuities because he understands it. Don't know how I ended up with that. And anybody who understands the rule against perpetuities understands the insanity that is that rule. But yeah, I'm here. <laughs> on accident, especially on accident, considering my contracts professor, I found out a couple weeks ago that I'm the mini version of what she looked like at my age. So, you know, really completely by accident. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So, I know that when I originally pitched <laughs> the idea of this episode to Belle, we wanted to talk about kind of the struggles that like blind people as a whole face <laughs> with education And, like, the thing is, is we've heard horror stories. Absolute positive horror stories. We've almost, oh, I've almost been through horror stories. Yeah. Belle has been through a lot more horror stories than I have, to be sure. But the thing is, is that I don't understand why they happen. Because with different laws and stuff, like, they shouldn't. With the Americans for Disabilities Act, or the Americans with Disabilities Act, you definitely, like, should not have the problems that these people, you know, are having. Like, these horror stories of teachers who are doing X, Y, Z that they shouldn't be doing. And just, like, it can get very, very... It's almost like it's not real. It seems like this comes from a work of fiction, that it should only be in a story. And it's not. It's things that have happened in real life. And so, like, for me, it's like, I don't feel like we can do that justice in truly a meaningful way. But what we can do is we can talk about our experiences and, you know, remind people that, hey, like, you're not alone This isn't just you. Like, there are other people who have gone through maybe not the same thing, but have gone through similar things, who have had these problems. And I'd like to say that I feel like, as a whole, we are getting better. Society is getting better and not, you know, having these horror stories happen. But also, there are times that I'm very much an optimist. (laughs) And so I do like to, you know, at least hope that maybe things are getting better, but maybe they're not. And like, you know, I unfortunately don't have any thoughts of how to fix them. I don't have any plans of how to do stuff. I know that one of the things that Belle is considering is she's considering looking into fighting disability law essentially like fighting for the people who aren't getting the things that they need and fighting against school boards and fighting against different employers and all that stuff to help the people who aren't getting the help that they need so i don't know may maybe one day this will be better hey man i was (laughs) Whenever I looked at colleges and stuff, I always had to ask, how's your disabilities program? Like, do you have any professors who, you know, don't really work well with you? Like, that whole thing. (laughs) And I asked that at my law school visit. And the professor was like, "Um, well, yeah, we all follow ADA. And I was just like, "Um, you're the first. (laughs) Yeah, about that. Not many people do. And she's like, it's the law. And I'm like, yeah, people take it more like a suggestion than the actual it's law. It's more of a general guideline. <laughs> it's more of a 
guideline suggestion than like, you know, law, actual law. And we're even seeing that with some of the things happening today with some other stuff that I am patiently waiting for a clash action lawsuit for. Hey, we're going to we're going to cover this, actually. I'm not we're not going to talk about it now. No, I'm, we, I'm leaving it. I was leaving it at that. Yeah, but we will ta- be talking about this in the next probably month or so. I'm waiting for more information. Yeah, to come we're out waiting for more information to more with some professors. Yeah, we're waiting for more information before we get, talk about this because it's going it to be is. a big thing. But anyway, if you are in school with someone that you see has a disability be a good human maybe try to help them out if you can if you can like just be just offer an ear or you know be like oh if like you need any help studying or you know creating a study group or or something like that just throwing it out there yeah yeah very much so it may be appreciated by some it it may not it's but all you can do is ask and if not hey you at least tried yeah and we're proud of you yes be good humans. And also, if, if you by chance have a disability and you're listening to this, remember you do have a brain. You do. And it, and it's not the brain that society says or thinks you should have. True. You know, everybody's different. You just have to find what works for you. Take Ari and I, for example. I cannot science to save my soul. Aria recently messed up on when a salesperson told her a price of something. <laughs> I don't numbers. (laughs) She doesn't number and she doesn't law. So like it's how your brain works to what fits you. But you do have a powerful brain and you can use it. Yes. And people are going to tell you that you can't. And people are going to, you know, they're going to say a lot of mean things. And they're not right. There is something that every single one of us is good at. We might not know what it is. We might struggle to find it. But every single one of us has a skill. A very special skill that is important to the world at large. And you've just got to find it and put that out there. Yes. And that's kind of where you need to focus. You kind of need to find what like drives you past what society says. For me, that's I want to help people. I don't know who I want to help, but I want to help people. And I know I sure as heck am not minded to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And I can't really be a police officer, nor would anybody want me to be a police officer. (laughs) But I found a way to help people and use my, what assets and skills I have to the best of my ability. Yes. And sometimes helping people is just making something that makes somebody smile. Just a little bit. Yes. Even if it is the tiniest little thing, it might not be be as big as being a doctor or a lawyer or a police officer it may be the tiniest of tiny things i mean heck i hope what we're doing helps in just even if it's just a very small way yeah just you know helps to make your day a little bit better or makes you think a little bit or gives you a different perspective like or you laugh at the stupidity that leaves our mouths that, that is also i mean a that's also that's also good too <laughs> yeah i i wouldn't blame you because my brain doesn't brain sometimes no especially when you know i don't really talk so like you know words leave my mouth at alarming speed and rate but yeah and, and for us this isn't our job this is just something we do for fun but we do it to provide something for others yeah i think that's where i was going with that yes yeah where i was going with that that is where you were going with that yes that is yeah as much as i would love to make money from this, you would we we don't you know we don't good thing i don't we don't make a penny from this and we do it purely because we want to make somebody laugh or change not change somebody's mind because that isn't what we're out to do, but more, I guess, give you something to think about. Something that's a different perspective than what you would normally see. And 
there's a whole great big world out there and each of us has our own story but sometimes we get so focused on our own that we forget that there are other people out there who are doing the exact same things as we are so that's kind of what we do where you're telling our story in our own way Mm -hmm. how we want to Mm -hmm. and you don't have to like it you don't even have to listen to it no don't affect me any no exactly and you might not agree you might really resonate with it and either way that's on you (laughs) but we want to put our story out there for the people that it does resonate with i also will put out there that formal education such as college or higher education is not for everyone. No, it is not. We are not pushing that in any way, shape, or Absolutely form. Absolutely not. We come from an area where most of our people we go to high school with go into trade. Yes. And we see nothing wrong with that. We see that as a respectable way to make a living. Nothing is wrong. The, the What we push for is doing, first off, what's best for you and be what makes you happy. True. And if you want to go after something that you don't think is in your reach, if you're kind of like us or kind of like Belle, who you're like, you know, I, I want to help people and I want to go into law, but I have dyslexia. I have ADHD. I'm legally blind. I'm deaf. Like any of that. If you want to go after something to make, you know, to try to make the world a better place in your own way, do it. Yes. Do you it. can. It, you can. And I can speak for, at least on behalf of my school, in my opinion, I believe we need more people with disabilities. Yes. A lot of them have some like learning disabilities like ADHD or, or some of like the more common ones or like dyslexia or, or, or things like that. But again, I believe I am one of the few people at my school with a physical disability. Mm-hmm. And I believe there needs to be more of that, especially in the law field. It it needs the more diversity. So if you're listening to this and you are your mind young or old who has ever thought about this and has a disability and is like, I never did it because of that. That does not mean anything, especially coming from me. For me, I know anybody who is a lawyer or has taken the law LSAT knows that it is difficult to do some of the problems because you need to learn how to to like graph things out. I was never taught that. And there was nobody to teach me how to do that section of the test. So I focused on the others. And I was able to get into law school, even though I didn't have the highest score. score. But I had other things to pad my application. I was super high GPA, 4.0 in high school, super high GPA in college, almost a 4.0. I'm mad about that. And all my activities that I've done, I had other things to pad. And I had references from professors that I had and other people as, as such. So... You know, just because you have that in your way shouldn't mean X, Y, Z. Correct. And like the thing (laughs) is, too, is even if it doesn't work out, even if you try and you fail, at least you tried and at least you're not going to look back and think, man, like if only I just made the attempt because, yeah, you might fail and that's okay. You can find something else and you can go back to the drawing board. But you can't just you can't you, you can't go turn back, back to the, time to get a redo of it. Well, that and you can't go back to the drawing board if you haven't tried to make something to begin with. So Arya should know. Uh, well, we yeah. I have gone back to the drawing board with Arya many a time. I think we finally decided on something. We decided on something and hey, it might work, it might not, and that's okay. You know, and I'll go back to the drawing board again and just figure it it, out, you know? You know, it's something that like everybody goes through. Like for me, there are weeks where I contemplate if being a lawyer is something I want. If this is really something I want to do. And then there are times where I'll read a certain case and I'm like, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Is to prevent stuff like this. 
from ever possibly happening again because it there, there are some injustices that aren't right especially like uh there's one contract case i refuse to tell the story of it and i refuse to name the case because the party is one of the parties is still alive and he does not want the publicity and i don't blame him but it is a heart-wrenching case my contracts professor has taught that case for years and she still cries when she tells the story of what he went through so you know there are times like that where i'm just like this is why I need to be here. And then there are other times I read a case about the definition of a chicken. <laughs> oh my gosh, that case. So, yes. So I guess all of this to say that, you know, education, it's a huge part of your life. Like, y- you know, you do need to, you know, get educated in some way, shape or form. Once but you- everyone is different and that's yeah. okay. And you can find what you want to actually learn and you can focus <coughs> on that and you can, you know, make a career out of it maybe like, you know, create something for the world. And, and another thing that our father always tells us, especially when we go to try to make decisions on our education is once you have some form of education, no one can take that from you. No. You have that for life. Yes. Even if it is a stupid little certificate in organizational leadership. They can't I, take it back. They can't take it back. That is yours. Believe me, I contemplated if it was worth it. But that hearing that always makes me feel better. Yeah. Because it puts things in a better perspective. I agree. So on that note, we're going to leave off here. Of course, we want to thank you for coming along today as we talked about education, our education experience, the whole nine yards. If you like this episode, if you like what you've been listening to, please consider following the podcast and sharing the episode with your friends. It really would help us to grow the show and we would appreciate the support those actions would give. And hey, if you want to leave a review, that would be pretty cool too. And then what are we going to be talking about next time did you change this one i i did yes okay. you're talking about a funny story yes so i will be by myself next time i'll explain why <laughs> then but i'm just going to be talking about just a funny story from my life so that being said hey don't forget that it is a blind life and we'll see you guys next time bye, bye.